we're going to return to prayer here in just a minute. And we're going to pray along these lines that we have been watching God reveal to us. That we believe that God is coming to rescue this generation. It will no longer be known as a generation of anxiety, depression, and death. It will be known as a generation of joy, fulfillment, and life. And um, I just wonder if we could just hear more about how it is that we've been watching and experiencing God's love begin to move and heal and change us on the inner, on the inside. Yeah, so um, for over half of my life, my identity has resided in my depression and my anxiety. Um, and on Wednesday, February 8th, uh, God showed up to Asbury and he convicted me to give up some anger and resentment that I had towards him, towards other people in my life, um, just for things that had been affected by my anxiety and my depression. And even bigger, he asked that I lay control at the feet of the cross. Um, and I had done this many times in prayer, um, but I always kind of swiped it up as I walked away. Um, and so for the first time in my life, I actually left all of that at the feet of Jesus. Yeah, and I left Hughes and I could breathe easier and the air in my lungs was so much lighter. And um, in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, God says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And for four straight days, I experienced no anxiety. Um, and it eventually came back, but my freedom didn't come in the form of depression and anxiety evacuating my life completely, but it came in the form of the control they had over my life being gone completely. <laughs> And my identity comes first from Christ and my daughtership in Him. And um, I really wish that my story was unique, but anxiety and depression have become the calling cards of the younger generations. And uh, I have seen God move in miraculous ways in college students over the past couple weeks. And my two biggest things in revival that God has revealed to me is one, my God is bigger than I thought He was because my God is bigger than my depression and my God is bigger than my anxiety and my story can be your story because God died on the cross for anxiety and depression to set us free. He walked out of the grave and you can too because I did. And my final revelation was Remembering not who I am, but whose I am. One of the beautiful things that we've been able to bear witness to is how we've watched countenances change. These students are not the same when we saw them two weeks ago. They're different. Their face is different. Their body is different. And I just want to hear one more testimony of how he's changed. So I was raised as a pastor's kid. Um, a lot of you guys probably already know my story. Um, as I grew up, I began to slowly choose the world more and more. Um, I started to feed my flesh more than feed my soul. Um, eventually, as I got to the summer before my senior year, I, I hit a season in my life um, that has, has brought a lot of trauma to my life and, and sent me into a season of dark depression uh, and characteristic of everything else that our generation has gone through. Um, and for that whole senior year, I struggled heavily with mental illness and suicidal ideation. Uh, I just longed to belong, um, to be loved, and I'd been running away from God for so long that I didn't know where to start. I began to, to go back to what I've been doing for years and, and run to things that um, only provided momentary pleasure and left me emptier than I was before. In the last two or three weeks, I felt the love of God in a way that I never have before. In the chaos of my life and trauma, I felt him embrace me. 
I felt so desired and sought after by the Father and truly can say that I belong in this amazing body of believers. God's mighty hand has been at work in obvious ways here on this campus. I've seen people's health restored physically, chains been broken, and ultimately lives saved as people have given their lives to Jesus. And that has been the wildest two weeks of my life, but I couldn't be more grateful. So we, we want to return to prayer because, yes, these last couple of weeks have been extraordinary, but in reality, they're normal. This is normal Christianity. This is what Jesus died to make possible. This is what we want to happen, and God wants to happen on every campus, in every heart and home and church and city. And so we want to just stand in a moment, join hands and hearts with two or three near you, wherever you are, just join up in a little huddle, and let's contend for our campus, for an outbreak of healing, for a great move of God to, to pour out his love and set us free. This is what we need in this generation, we have signs, we have evidence that God is wanting to do it. So let's ask him for it. Are you ready? So let's stand up. Let's cry out to God for healing in this generation.